What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie, Futuristic Mike. Welcome back to another Power Book 3 Raising Canaan video. Now, this is going to be the review and recap for Power Book 3 Raising Canaan, Season 2, Episode 1, the premiere. If you're a fan of Raising Canaan, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so when I post videos on Power Book 3 Raising Canaan, you get them. Now, Power Book 3 Raising Canaan is back. Yes, it feels great to have this show back, man. It's been a whole year, a little over a year, actually. And we're finally back to watch season two. It feels so good to have the show back, man. I just love whenever anything in the Power Universe is airing every week. It just feels so great. But the episode title is The More Things Change. And honestly, a very solid episode, man. A very good premiere episode. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. There's one thing in the episode, though, that pissed me off so much, man. And this is the thing that pissed me off the most. When Jessica was in bed with Crown, I just knew that woman could not be trusted. I knew it, man. I knew Lou should have let her go a minute ago. I even said in season one, I was like, man, can Jessica be trusted? I just didn't know if you could trust her or not. But now it's confirmed, man. She can't be trusted. But basically, man, in this episode, Kanan returns and Rock is trying to put everything back together you know, put the family back together. There was a whole bunch of tension between the family and stuff. She's just trying to get the business up and going again. And she's pretty much trying to expand her empire. And when the episode starts, we see Rock going to pick Kanan up from Virginia to bring him back to New York. I guess he spent the summer in Virginia with his Aunt Deborah. So he was there for a while, man, trying to get away from everything. Rock thought he would be safe. Remember, Symphony brought him there. Detective Howard, he's being discharged from the hospital, man. It seems like he's going to be OK. You know, he's going to make a full recovery. Um, he can't find his ring, so he's pretty upset. He said he's not going nowhere till he finds his ring. And then Detective Burke is there. You know, she's talking to Howard's doctor about his memory loss and stuff, because apparently he can't remember anything. But the doctor told Burke that, you know, Howard, it was a miracle that he recovered and everything. He said it's one of the biggest miracles that the hospital has ever seen. And it is a very big miracle because he came to the hospital with cancer. You got to remember he had cancer and he had a bullet hole in his chest and he's recovering. And there was another cop with matching bone marrow or whatever that helped him out and donated. And now Detective Howard is in remission and his lungs healed and everything. So he's going to be OK. Now we see Lulu and Jessica and they're arguing about Famous's career and stuff. Lulu doesn't really want to back him up because Famous is messing up, man. He's smoking weed. He's not really writing like he's supposed to and stuff. Now, when Lulu pulls off from Jessica, he hears this singer at the light or whatever. Her name is Zisa. Um, she's played by Paulina Singer. And Lou drove super fast, pulled his car over in front of her and offered to sign her to his label. And she wasn't very happy at the way he handled the situation. She said, don't ever do that shit again. But he gave her his card and stuff and said, I'm looking forward to you calling me. So he wants to mess with this new singer, Zisa. And we see Jukebox visiting Nicole's grave. And it's very sad, man. Jukebox is still very upset. It's going to take a long time for her to get over this. And then we see Kanan and Rock in the car. They're on their way back to New York or whatever. And she's telling Kanan that Detective Howard has amnesia and he doesn't remember anything so it's safe for him to come back but of course you know the look on Kanan's face he's still worried now let's talk about Marvin man he's gonna beat his case because Tony didn't show up to testify but he has to go to anger management classes like he has to we'll see how this turns out man we know Marvin has some anger issues he's probably gonna be in the class getting into it with somebody but I hope he can get through the classes okay without any problems now, Burke gets Detective Howard to his house and, you know, she's questioning him about what happened the night he got shot and stuff. And she told him about Unique, you know, where Unique was that night and stuff. But Howard says he does not remember a thing from that night. He said he can't help her. He doesn't remember anything. And you see Burke looking at this file sitting on the table or whatever. And later on, it shows Howard picking it up and looking at it. And it's a file with Kanan's picture on it. So Detective Howard remembers everything. At least that's what I think. Now, Rock takes Kane into the projects and you can see she really built her empire while he's been gone. You know, Kanan sees, you know, all the crackheads and everybody walking around in the halls and stuff. And they had a great spot for everything to go down, man. They could watch out for the police. 
you know, they paid off people. Somebody's on the top floor looking out and everything. It's just a very good system that she has going on. Making the top floor of the building a trap house was a great job because they can contain it very well. You know, it's not going to go onto the streets. The cops won't know about it because they're up in the sky. So they're really bringing the heat, man. They're just keeping it very low key, man. Keeping a low profile. They're doing it the right way. We see Unique. We learned that he's probably going to be getting out of prison soon. So he'll be back out on the streets. But how will his empire be when he gets out, man? Will it be waiting for him or what's going to happen? Now we see Jukebox going through old pictures and she finds one of her mother. You know, she's going to be looking into trying to find her. We know her mother's going to be in this season based off the trailer. Latoya Luckett was announced to be on this show a while back. So yeah, Jukebox's mother will be in this season. I can't wait to see her. Now we see Rock gets everybody together for dinner. And this is the first time they're all going to have dinner together, you know, since Kanan's been gone and stuff. So it's going to be a great dinner. Marvin, he tries to talk to Jukebox before the dinner and stuff, but she didn't have nothing to say to him. She's still, you know, mad at him about how he attacked her and stuff. You know, she has this resentment towards him. And I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know if they'll ever talk again. We'll just have to wait and see. It was a nice little dinner or whatever, but it was awkward between Marvin and Jukebox. But after the dinner, you know, Rock says something to Lulu for putting their business on hold or whatever for his new record label. It seems like he only is worried about the record label and he's not doing the family business. So Rock is concerned about that. And Lulu and Marvin aren't on the same page right now. You can tell that they're kind of competing over Rock's attention. Now we see Kanan and Jukebox outside. You know, Jukebox is smoking a cigarette and stuff. And Kanan is talking about whether or not he's cut out for the family business. You know, he's just messed up over this Howard thing. And Jukebox says, look, Rock is wrong for making you do that. She should have never asked you to do that. And then while they're outside, you know, Howard is watching Kanan from the distance. And he kind of drives down the street all slow. And Kanan saw him. Now, Rock is talking to her brothers about expansion, you know, about moving the business on up to the next level. And they're talking about hiring the enemy. Rock wants to hire Warrell, even though he tried to kill Lulu. Rock wants to give Lou this new territory, you know, these new projects to take over. And he's really not trying to, but he's going to have no choice. And she wants Warrell to work under Lou. She wants to do everything she can to make it so that Unique doesn't have a crew to go to when he gets out of jail. She doesn't want him to have nothing. Now we see that boy Scrap gets caught in some card games and stuff. He's gambling and he was even warned by Rock to stop that. But he got caught, man. The police raided him and stuff and took him in. Now, Detective Howard goes to the station and he sees Scrappy in there being interrogated and stuff. And everybody's happy to see Howard back at the station. They're saying, you know, he's their hero and stuff. And then he talks to Burke. And she's just very focused on figuring out who shot Howard. She's being a good partner. Now, we see Unique in prison and he gets into a fight with three dudes who are trying to intimidate some other inmate. And honestly, this fight was fire, man. This is one of the best fights that I've seen in the Power Universe so far. This was honestly a great fight. But Unique whooped their ass, man. He beat the brakes off their ass. Now, Rock and Kane and meet with Symphony at some restaurant. And she wants to, you know, say thank you for driving Kane into Virginia and stuff. And they haven't seen each other, you know, since that time Symphony drove Kane in. It doesn't seem like these two are going to be together in the future, but I could be wrong. You know, it seems like Rock wants Symphony to stay away from everything to keep him safe. But I don't know. These two could end up getting back together. And then when they're outside, Symphony tells Rock that Kanan was scared of what happened. Now, Kanan didn't tell Symphony the specifics, but Symphony knows something is going on. But they hug each other and part ways. Now, we see at the studio, Jessica is saying to Lulu and Crown to please, you know, support Famous with his career. She wants to really get Famous out there and put more marketing dollars behind him and stuff. And Lulu just isn't having it. He has the same answer as he had before. But Lulu brings in his new artist, Zisa, and she's amazing in that booth, man. She's definitely in there blowing away, man. She definitely impressed me and I know she impressed Lulu. So I'm sure we'll be seeing Zisa a lot this season and I can't wait to see more about her character. 
Now, this part of the episode is the part that pissed me off. Um, Jessica and Crown, they're in there smashing. And I honestly knew this was coming, man. You could honestly feel this out from the first season. You just knew it was coming. And they're talking about, you know, what Lulu would do if he found out about them. And we all know Lulu would kill Crown, man. Lou is a killer. He has killed before. He would definitely kill him. And Crown hooked Jessica up with this management job in L.A. Now, Rock goes in Kanan's room and Kanan confesses to Rock that he doesn't think he's cut out to be in the drug game. He said he originally started doing it because he wanted to protect her. And she said, look, my job is to protect you, not the other way around. And then the phone rings and Rock takes the call. And it was your boy, Detective Howard, obviously, because we see them meeting up. But before they meet up, we see Unique is released from prison. And your boy Marvin is lurking in the distance. So there's going to be some issues when Unique gets out. But then we see Rock and Detective Howard, you know, meeting up. It shows them come face to face, but it doesn't show, you know, what they say or anything. And I'm sure we'll get that in the next episode. But this was a solid episode. Very solid. I enjoyed it. I can't wait for the second episode, man. This show never fails to impress me. I love this prequel, man. I just cannot wait to see how this season plays out. And I can't wait to see how many seasons of this we get. I hope we get introduced to young Ghost and Tommy. I just can't wait for everything that's to come, man. I'm very excited for the future of this show. But if you guys have seen the premiere episode, comment your thoughts down below. Let me know all your thoughts. What are your theories, thoughts, predictions, and everything else? Keep supporting your boy, and I'll be continuing to bring y'all Power Book 3 Raising Kane and content in the future. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And smash the notification bell so you can never miss a video. If you guys want to donate to the channel, I got links below to the PayPal and Cash App accounts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me get out of here, y'all. It's your boy, Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.